on the 659 and 696 and 796 engines, one thing to be particularly aware of is that there's no marks to align the camshafts on the cam surrounds. I've got the timing marks here highlighted in white. If you just turn the engine over, the top dead centre, horizontal firing, which is where the mark on the timing shaft pulley lines up with the slot in the crankcases. So this is horizontal cylinder, top dead centre firing. You can see this cam is here and this cam is here, but there's no actual marks anywhere to line those up with. So if you pull the belts off without putting marks here and here, go to put it back together again, there's nothing to line it up with. What they do do instead on these engines is put a slot in the back of the camshaft, which is this little slot here. And what you do is you put a tool in from behind. And you can see on the cap of the end of the camshaft here, there's three screws. These two hold the cap in, but the centre one is where we screw a tool in to locate the camshaft. And if the engine is at top dead centre, firing on the horizontal in the right position, this tool, which you can buy genuine or California Cycle Works sell them, will screw in here into the end of the cam. And I may have it in the right spot and it may have fitted, I think. But we'll look at that some more in a minute. So if you are going to do cam timing, belt change, valve clearance work on one of these little, little DS engines, make sure you either make marks that make sense to you or you have the tools to locate the cams at the end. Um, this engine is, it says 32,000 kilometres old, so it should have had two valve clearance adjustments by now and one set of belts. I was going to check the belts and then check the cam timing and, and then uh, tension the belts to spec and check the cam timing again, but as it turns out, the belts are at 100 hertz and one of them's at about 110 hertz, which is a bit too tight on these engines in my experience. Um, in about 2005, 2006, they made the journal on this end of the camshaft a bit narrower. And if the belts are too tight, particularly on this, those engines, uh, when they get hot, they make a really horrid bearing noise. It's like a, a bad alternator or water pump bearing in a car. It's just one of those noises that makes my skin crawl, which I assume is the camshaft actually running directly on the, the head, like it's pushed through the oil film. Um, the first time we saw it was a S2R1000. We did a first service on one, and back in those days we used to adjust belt tension every service. And the DS engines had initially had a, a belt tension spec of 140 hertz, which we used to use. And we did it to this S2R1000 and it left, and the guy came back a couple of hours later saying it's making a horrid noise, which it was. And so we rang up the importers in Sydney and to get the, the official opinion and the fix was to loosen the belts off until the noise stopped. Um, and so that generally is about 100 hertz on these engines. If you go too much over 100, you'll start to get noise when they get really hot. So that's why I always run 100 hertz and that's basically what this one is. So I will uh, check the cam timing as it sits now then we'll put the factory tools in, we'll lock the engine up, uh, undo the cam pulleys, and then check the cam timing after it's been set with the factory tools to see if it changes. One thing about these DS engines is you often get an oil leak around these cam end caps on the vertical and then the horizontal. And the reason for that is not as straightforward as it might appear. Um, early engines are quite annoying. The later engines, and I think this one will classify as a later engine, they fixed in a um, quite amusingly complicated fashion. Now the reason the early ones leak is because 
Let me get this out. Oh, there's actually a washer there. What is that? Get this cap off. We might need a little screwdriver to lever it off a little bit. Yep, off it comes. You can see here there's a big square groove machined all the way around and a square section rubber o-ring inside that groove. On the very early ones this was just a flat piece and there was an o-ring in a groove here to seal the oil in the camshaft ball. But the problem was these four rocker pins here have a very small o-ring on them and they weren't sealing. And so you could replace the o-rings here all you liked, it would still leak oil. And you can replace these o-rings, it doesn't really do much because the o-rings are a little bit too thin for the application. So what I started doing was getting the rocket, the cam end cap gaskets, the paper gaskets from the old style engines and putting a hole in them to suit these. And they had two other holes that were sort of away from everything and putting them on. And when I went to the US one year for a visit, I went to see Chris at California Cycle Works and I, with one of my gaskets modified and said, Chris, can you please make these? <laughs> so now Chris makes a gasket that on the earlier models without this rubber ring in here, you put the gasket on and the cap back on and it stops the oil leaks completely. And it's much nicer than some people would just cover this in a, a silicon sealant, whack it back on. And yes, it works, but I really hate putting silicon sealant on surfaces like that. The gasket works much better. Now, one thing that happens when you put the gasket in is that it moves this cap out from where it was. And because the camshaft isn't fixed, we can actually push it in and out. As you can see here, the cam moves in and out a fair way because it floats. If you put a gasket there, that means that the cam can come this way. But because it has full oil pressure on the end of the cam and the oil gallery is, comes in right there, when there's full oil pressure in there, the cam's gonna get forced that way. So it really makes no difference having a gasket in there or not. The camshaft isn't gonna come this direction when it's running because of the oil pressure forcing it across to the thrust surface that I showed in an early video on the pulley side. So that's how I like to fix the oil leaks on these. And this being a later cover is the way Ducati fixed it in a typically complicated and expensive way. Now I'm just gonna pull the belts off and show a couple of things to look for on these. I'll spin the, I'm gonna pull a, I'll pull both belts off. We'll spin it around to I was on top of the center firing. Again, this is the position where you have it, where the marks line up here. As I said earlier, there's no marks here, but as, apart from using the tool into the back of the casing, and we'll try one other trick as well that I'm curious about. So crack these. It's actually got California Cycle Works belts on it. Hadn't noticed that before. So, belt comes off. They're quite tight at the bottom here. I usually, when it's apart, get a little file and file a small groove in between two teeth where the mark is. And uh, that way, it's much easier to get the belts on and off. <clears throat> this belt's hard to get off because the camshaft is near the nose of the inlet. So it's got load on it and actually stays there. And if you're not paying attention and you pull the belts off and you decide to put it in gear and turn the engine over with the back wheel and you drive the piston into the valve that's being held open by the cam, you bend the valve. I know because I've done it. It's a really good way to wake yourself up. And it costs a lot of money when it's a customer's bike to fix. Okay, so now we've got that's on, they're both in the base circle. These bearings, these fixed ones, fail quite early in their life. I've seen 24,000 kilometer old ones seized and cocked. That one is rough and dry, so I'll definitely replace that. If they're noisy, it's not overly rough, but it's noisy. 
So I'd replace both of these. I actually keep them in stock. I go through so many of them these days on these late engines for, for whatever reason. Um, it's peculiar to these engines, the older uh, traditional two valve engines, you very, very rarely replace them. Not sure why. And just check the bearings and the, the moving ones. But they feel, mm, that one's a bit noisy. I think I'd replace that one because of the noise it makes. I'm not sure about that one. It gets expensive. These are uh, 80 odd dollars each, I think, and these are 100 and something dollars each. Now, if you've taken the cam belts off without putting any marks on it and you haven't got tools to line it up, and you can visually take the plug out on the back. I'm just going to turn my attention to the horizontal now because it's easier to illustrate what I'm about to ramble about. If you've taken the belts off without putting a mark on and you haven't got a tool to line up the camshaft in the back here, although you can visually do it, what you can do is just position the cam. And the cams rot rotate counterclockwise or anticlockwise, so as the cam goes around, the exhaust valve's opening, I can feel the exhaust valve once I've moved the piston now. And the last thing that happens is the, as the cam goes around, is the inlet valve closes and you can feel the inlet valve is starting to open there so we know the inlet valve has closed about there and then the cam rotates, rotates around with the engine to top dead center firing and it goes bang and that's usually about a hundred degrees now these pulleys have 20 teeth which means in a 720 degree cycle because these rotate half engine speed that each tooth is about 36 crankshaft degrees. So if the cam, if the valve closes completely about 100 degrees before top dead centre, that's about three teeth. So what we'll do is we'll try, and this might not work, but I'm curious. That's why I've put a groove in here. It makes it much easier to get the belts on. So if this is top dead centre, and that's where the inlet valve, you can just feel the cam stop when the inlet valve starts to open, or oh, it's closing. So if we say that's a tooth there, we go one, two, three teeth. And we see if the belt, the belt will go on about that position somewhere. We'll pop the belt on. Oh, what on the wrong? Why isn't the belt going on? There we go. Belt's on. Pull the tension up. The, the tension on these, like the other two valves, is similar. You just lift that up so it takes all the tension out. And that's about right. I wouldn't leave it like that. I would check it, but that's about right. And generally on the, the DS engines, the old system of having you know, putting a 5 or a 6 mil Allen key through doesn't work on the horizontal cylinder, whether it's the, the way the pulleys and the tensioners are aligned, I don't know, but generally you can't really pull that off very much. There's a bit more movement there than there is on a 1000 or 1100 or an ST3, but realistically you can't move the belt off the roller at all. So, that is cam rotated three teeth from inlet valve closing. So we'll turn it over and we'll see if it stops. Always the fun part. And when, if it is going to stop, usually it will stop at top dead center overlap, which is when the white dot is up here. If it stops on the exhaust valve, it will stop before top dead center overlap. If it stops on the inlet valve, it will stop after top dead center overlap. The piston's coming up now, and past we go. So, it's possibly in the right place. But the best way to find out is spin the engine around, and we'll have a look in this hole here. Now you might not be able to see in that hole, 
it turns out, because it's a very, very small hole. But pull the plug out. And we get our cam tool. Let's see if it screws in and how far it screws in. And you can sort of tell because it's screwed right into the cam. If you try and turn the engine over, you can see the tool moving. That's, and it won't go in any further. If you look on the other side, you'll see the belt sort of pulling its slack against itself. So realistically, I would say that is the cam in the correct place. And that's the sort of thing you can guess. Usually it would be two to three teeth. Um, it's one way to do it. But you can actually, if you get a bright light, look in here. If you turn the engine over slowly, you can see that slot in the end of the, the camshaft come past the hole. And that's one visual way to do it fairly easily. If you haven't made any marks, pulled the belts off and found yourself in a whole lot of mess. Um, I did that many, many, many years ago with the Moto Guzzi Daytona. Um, I'd been doing Ducati belts for a few years, had never done a Daytona before. And I simply pulled the belts off. <laughs> I lined the mark up on the crankcase. There's a mark on, on the timing shaft and the crankcase. Didn't even look at the cams, pulled the belts off. And then we put the belts, new belts on and suddenly realised there were no marks. And that initiated a, a few hour job where I had to make some tools to get a degree wheel on it and to get top dead centre gauges on it. So then I could check the cam timing and make it right. Um, so it was quite an expensive mistake on my behalf.